Welcome. I'm Alice Finnamore. I'm the Minister of Prince William Pastoral Charge in New Brunswick, in Canada. Thank you for joining us. Gather us in, ground us in you. Gather us in, ground us in you. Gather us in, gather us in, ground us, ground us in you. Let's pray. Today we're grateful for our scripture memory of you, Jesus, our teacher and friend. We are grateful for the love you had for ordinary people. We are grateful for your confidence that ordinary people are up to the task of sharing your love and good news. Open our eyes to see those who need to hear the story. Amen. Today I'm going to read a passage for you from Luke chapter 10, the first 11 verses and then verses 16 to 20. And I'm reading from the contemporary English version. The Lord chose 72 other followers and sent them out two by two to every town and village where he was about to go. He said to them, a large crop is in the fields, but there are only a few workers. Ask the Lord to, in charge of the harvest to send out workers to bring it in. Now go, but remember, I am sending you like lambs into a pack of wolves. Don't take along a money bag or a traveling bag or sandals and don't waste time greeting people on the road. As soon as you enter a home, say, God bless this home with peace. If the people living there are peace loving, your prayer of peace will bless them. But if they are not peace loving, your prayer will return to you. Stay with the same family eating and drinking whatever they give you because workers are worth what they earn. Don't move around from house to house. If the people of a town welcome you, eat whatever they offer, heal their sick and say God's kingdom will soon be here. And if the people of the town refuse to welcome you, go out into the street and say, you are sh or we are shaking the dust from our feet as a warning to you and you can be sure that God's kingdom will soon be here. My followers, Whoever listens to you is listening to me. Anyone who says no to you is saying no to me. And anyone who says no to me is really saying no to the one who sent me. When the 72 followers returned, they were excited and said, Lord, even the demons obeyed when we spoke your name. Jesus told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. I have given you the power to trample on snakes and scorpions and to defeat the power of your enemy, Satan. Nothing can harm you, but don't be happy because evil spirits obey you. Be happy because your names are written in heaven. May our spirits be blessed by these words from our ancient scriptures. Sometimes there is a part of us that wants to stand out. We want to be special. We want to be noticed. And other times we don't want to be noticed at all. We want to just plain live our lives in quiet peace. So there's often a battle going on inside of us between the parts that want to be just plain ordinary folks and the parts that don't want to be ordinary at all. Usually the parts that want to be just plain ordinary are the shy parts, the parts that are scared of being out there front and center. There's safety in ordinariness, isn't there? The best place to hide something special actually is in an ordinary place. When my kids were little, I would get some private time by going into my room and shutting the door and I'd put big, huge headphones on to keep out the noise. After a while of doing that, I discovered that if I was in my room with the door open, they didn't have any idea where I was. 
I could hide away in plain sight. I think Jesus liked to hide away in plain sight too. Ordinariness was a safety feature for Jesus. He worked under the radar a lot of the time, like a secret agent might. Imagine what might have happened if Jesus came right out, first off saying, I'm God and you can't kill me. If you try, I will just come right back to life again. If they had psychiatric hospitals back in his day, they would have locked him up. But in Jesus' day and culture, such a statement could mean death. Most of the time, though, if anyone started to think that he was the Messiah, Jesus would tell them not to say a word. Don't tell anyone that I cured you, he said. Don't tell anyone what you saw, and so on. He did not want to let on in public that he was anything more than an itinerant preacher. This morning, we read the story about Jesus sending his followers out on their own. He told them to go ahead of him to all the towns and cities. He said not to take extra clothes, not to take any money, and not to be too demanding of their hosts. Jesus knew he was on the way to his death Time was running out, and he had to prepare his followers to continue without him. Jesus didn't give them a lot of instructions when he was sending them out because he was in a hurry. The harvest was ready, he said. And so he told them to go without any money, no purse or wallet or money belt. He said to go without an extra bag of clothes, Don't even wear sandals, he said. Just go. I wonder what Jesus would say about our financial concerns and worries. I think he would say, just do mission and don't worry about the money. Don't worry. So I imagine many people walked the roads in Jesus' time without sandals, but he made a point of sending them out barefoot. Just go, Jesus said, now. Trust me, you'll be okay. Just don't dilly-dally. Don't stop to chat along the way. Keep your focus. Go into the towns and ask to stay at someone's house. Now, these weren't friends' houses. And this was a culturally appropriate thing to do. And he said, If they give you a place to stay and food to eat, eat whatever they give you and don't be fussy. Bless them and give them peace. Heal the sick while you're there and tell them that the kingdom of God is near. But if they don't welcome you, if they don't wash your feet and make you their guest, wipe your feet off yourself and carry on. Don't take it personally. They aren't really rejecting you. They're rejecting me, Jesus said. So off they went. Jesus sent out 72 people. We might think it would have been better for him to send out the disciples, his 12 closest friends. But Jesus sent out 72. It's like he was saying that he doesn't want to depend on only a few people. Everyone has to participate. You can't get off the hook by saying you are just an ordinary person, that you're not one of the apostles or you're not the minister or you're not on the church council. No, that wouldn't cut it with Jesus. Jesus didn't distinguish between the inner circle and the rest of his followers. He sent them all out, all the ordinary people, and all of them did very well. They went out quietly, but they came back almost floating on air with excitement. Lord, they said, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. Jesus replied, yes, I know. 
I could see Satan falling from falling like lightning and I've given you authority. I've given you power over the enemy. Nothing will harm you. In other words, Jesus was telling them that they were far from ordinary. Even in the most humble garb, even when they seemed to be begging for their supper, they were carrying inside of them greater power than the powers in the world. But Jesus went on to say, don't get too cocky about all that. Just rejoice that your names are written down in heaven. I remember a story that Norm Whitney told me once when I first was thinking about pursuing ordination. He said that he hoped that I would never wear a clergy collar. He told me about coming back to his car one day just as the meter man was putting a parking ticket on his window. Seeing Norm's collar, the meter man apologized and started to tear up the ticket. And Norm insisted on paying. He was no different than anyone else, he said. He should pay. He did not want to be treated any different. And he said that he never wore a clergy collar after that day. There's nothing wrong with wearing a clergy collar. Sometimes it makes it easier for a stranger to know where they can find spiritual assistance. And I wear my rainbow collar because I want to let people know that I represent a safe place for LGBTQ people. But a clergy collar does not make me better than anyone else. Jesus sent out his followers without extra money or extra clothes or even shoes. There's nothing wrong with any of those things, but beware of thinking that you deserve them or have to have them. Beware of arrogance. Instead, cultivate humility. Humility is not about putting yourself down. Humility is not believing that you're inadequate or not good enough. Humility is about holding the power of God in an ordinary way. Humility is like working undercover. God uses ordinary people. Jesus wanted those 72 people to go out empty and ordinary so that God's power might be more evident in their journey. But it was also for their safety. These days, we don't have to worry about Romans thinking that we're plotting a coup against the emperor and we don't have to hide out to avoid crucifixion. But we do have to be careful about putting ourselves up on a pedestal. If we think that we are better than someone else, it might not be too long before we're toppled off of that pedestal. Instead of being humble, we end up being humiliated. You've probably met people who don't go to church because of all the hypocrites that they know who do. All those church people who think that they are so good, but turn out to be good only on Sunday mornings. I have known all of you only as being kind and compassionate. You would do anything for each other. You would do anything for your neighbors. But when it comes to doing something that might be embarrassing, most people hold back keep quiet, not say a word. Before COVID, we had planned to have a special Sunday when we would bring someone new to church, a neighbor or a friend who wouldn't ordinarily come. Maybe we will plan to do that again someday, but we don't have to have an official bring a friend Sunday to bring a friend. What stops us from doing that now? Look around the neighborhood. 
There are so many new people these days. People you may not have even said hello to yet. Or people that you're sure would never go to church with you. But Jesus said, ask them anyway. And if they aren't interested, do what Jesus told the disciples. Go to the next place. Go to the next person. Just keep asking. If someone says they aren't good enough to go to church, remember that church is for ordinary people, not good people. Remember that you are one of the ordinary people. Asking people to come to church with you may make you scared of being rejected. But like Jesus said, they aren't really rejecting you. They are rejecting him. But like the disciples, you might come back rejoicing at what happens if you actually go out there. If you take what happens, if you take your ordinary self at Jesus' word. So, over the summer, keep your eyes open. Who could you invite to church? Let's pray. Lord, why are we so afraid to invite people to join us at church? Why are we afraid to be friends to all those we meet? Why do we call ourselves too ordinary to be part of the mission of God in our communities? May we look at our hearts and notice the root of our fears. May we learn to turn to you for courage. Fill us and renew us. In all things for which we pray, give us grace and wisdom. For the sake of Jesus, the Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are pilgrims on a journey, fellow travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and share the load. Sister, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen the journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. May you have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us. Amen.